Hi, I'm Deanna Springer. On behalf of Nancy Zeman Productions and PBS Wisconsin, thank you for joining us for this special educational presentation. Please add your questions for the presenter in the chat and stay tuned for a Q&A after the lecture. Then be sure to explore everything else the Great Wisconsin Quilt Show has to offer, including beautiful quilt exhibits and an interactive vendor mall. Thank you and enjoy. Hi, I'm Christy Bertram, Director of Education and Training with Burning of America. I want to show you a fun project you can make, and we're actually going to use three different machines for this project. So here's the project. It is a composition book cover, and what we're going to do is we're going to quilt the fabric first on a long arm machine, then we're going to embroider it on the V770 QE+, and then we're going to do this beautiful finish and assemble the project at the L860 overlocker. So let's get started. What you're gonna find with this project is by using each machine, you're going to actually save a lot of time because you're using each machine for the thing that it's really good at. So let's take a look first at doing the quilting. We're actually going to do some ruler work quilting. And for my project, for my composition book, I found that a fat quarter was just about big enough. But if you're a beginning ruler work person, if you're new to ruler work, you want to actually go a little bigger because the more room you have to hold on to when you're doing your ruler work, the better off you're going to be. So you might even want to go up to like a half yard if you're just getting started. And then as you get a little bit better at your ruler work quilting, you can work with a little bit less space. So I'm at the Q16 and I've put on the adjustable ruler foot number 72. That's the one I'm going to use. And this foot also actually works on a domestic machine as well. So here I'm using it on the long arm, but you also can use it on a home sewing machine, on a Bernina. So I've got the 72 foot on. And what I wanna do is I'm going to lower the presser foot and make sure that the foot is residing where I want it to go. So it's actually a little high. And now because it's adjustable, I can adjust it higher or lower to be right at the line of the fabric. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to mark my fabric. So we've got a ruler here. Because I'm doing ruler work, I'm going to draw some lines to give me a guidance. Just gonna draw a line. Now, I've just drawn one line. It depends on the type of template that you're using, how far apart your lines need to go. The template I'm going to use is the Ribbon Candy template from Amanda Murphy's Good Measure line. And it's a three and a half inch template. And so it tells me right on the template that it's a three and a half inch. So this is gonna make a Ribbon Candy design that is three and a half inches. So if I want to, I can go ahead and mark another guideline three and a half inches away. And that way I can use the lines on the template on my quilting ruler to help me quilt. And you can keep going across all the way across your project if you want to and have all your lines drawn ahead of time. If you're a beginner, another thing that you can do is you can just draw the first couple of lines and then you can add the lines as you go. And that way, if you kind of start to drift a little bit and your lines are not exactly perfect, you can draw new lines and get everything straightened up along the way. Um, but if you're feeling pretty confident, you can draw your lines all the way across. So what you wanna do anytime you're doing any kind of free motion quilting, whether it's regular free motion or ruler work, is you want to do a check to make sure your stitching is just the way you want it to go before you start actually doing your quilting. So what I'm going to do is do a uh, pull up my bobbin thread and I like to leave a long tail and then I will come back in and tuck those tails into my project later. So now I've got that set. I'm going to turn on my VSR and you can actually see the lights come on on this machine. It has the VSR mounted below. So I can see the lights come on. I know my VSR is on so I can start quilting. Okay. 
So I'm just gonna do this on a scrap of fabric or on another extra area of my project just to make sure that I'm happy with the stitch quality before I actually start using my template. So I'm happy with this. So I'm going to exit my Bernina stitch regulator and I'm going to raise my presser foot and just pull that to the side. And now I'm ready to come over and actually do the ruler work. Now when I'm doing ruler work, I like to use gloves. So you can use any quilting gloves that you like, whichever ones make you feel like you've got a little bit of extra security. So I'm gonna put on my quilting gloves and I've got my ruler handy. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to use this template. It has a line at the bottom of the ribbon. So here's the ribbon and then here's the line and this is where we're actually gonna stitch is in this area. We're going to stitch the bottom of the curve first. So we're gonna stitch the bottom and then back out to the top. And then what we'll do is we'll stop there, move the ruler up and stitch the next curve. Now you might be wondering, how do I know where to put that ruler when I go to the next curve? Well, there's actually a line here where you can just line up the previous shape. So in this case, the previous ribbon from the ribbon candy, and then your next piece is gonna be in the right place. Because we're going to be doing this starting and stopping, we're gonna use BSR mode two. So mode two um, for the Bernina stitch regulator is when you move the fabric, the uh, needle will go up and down, will stitch. When you stop moving the fabric, the needle will stop stitching. So it will pause for you and that'll give you a chance to move your template and go to the next area. So again, we're going to start um, here. We're gonna start on the line that we have marked. I'm gonna pull up my bobbin thread Make sure I've got that out of the way. And we're going to get our template in place. So we want that template to be lined up. We're using those three and a half inch apart lines that we've marked. So we've got our lines here that we're aligning. And then when we are ready, we're gonna lower the presser foot, make sure it fits right where we want it to go. And then we're gonna turn on BSR2 with the kickstart. So I'll use the kickstart. My BSR is on. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold on to kind of the four corners of this template with my fingers and holding the fabric and the template at the same time, we quilt following the curve of your template. We go all the way up. And then again, we stop, so the BSR stops. We slide our ruler down. And then how do we know where that ruler needs to go? We line that line, that ribbon candy up with the previous line we just stitched. So I can actually see that this lined up just perfect and my two lines are still there. So now I still have the BSR on, I just start moving again. We'll just keep going. Okay, so you would keep going all the way down the length of your fabric. I'm actually going to stop. Let's turn off my BSR and start a new row. So when you go to your do your new row, now how do you know where to put the next line? Well, again, you can use the lines on the template. We're going to again use that three and a half inch line. And with this ribbon candy, what you typically want to do is the loops are gonna line up with each other. And that way the curves that go to the right are going to tuck right into the opposite side into the open area. So you use the lines on the ruler to see that it's going to tuck right in between. So again, now we're gonna start a new line of quilting, pull up the bobbin thread. Okay, get your tails out of the way. 
use the kickstart to turn on the BSR and start quilting. And you would just keep quilting that way all the way across your whole project. I really love this ribbon candy template because it's really good for beginners. It's very forgiving. If you don't quite get it exactly perfect, it's not going to be really noticeable on your project. And it's a really easy one to move to go from one section to the next. So I would really recommend this if you're a beginner to ruler work to try this ribbon candy template. The other thing I love about this template is Amanda Murphy has great videos on all of her good measure rulers that will actually walk you through and she's got a great camera right on the ruler walking you through exactly how to hold it and how to use that particular ruler. So as you can see, with the long arm, with the BSR in the base of the machine, we can actually use Bernina stitch regulation with ruler work. So it's great to have that uh, dual functionality to be able to do ruler work with BSR at the long arm. So you're gonna do your whole fabric, and then once you've got enough for your whole composition book, you're going to cut it to the size you need for your cover. So for my cover, I measured this and it was 10 inches. And then when I measured from uh, the front of the book to the back of the book, it was 15 inches. So I actually made this 10 and a half by 16 inches because you need to accommodate a little bit for the fact that it's going around the curve. So for a standard composition book cover, you wanna make a piece, a top piece that's 10 and a half inches by 16 inches, and that is going to be the size that you're going to use to complete. So when you're doing your quilting, make something bigger than that so you can cut down to the 16 by 10 and a half inch piece. All right, now we're ready to take our fabric. Once you've done all the quilting, we're going to cut it down, and then we're going to go to the embroidery machine and add a monogram. Okay, so now we've finished quilting our fabric and we're ready to add the embroidery. So I've got a piece here that I've already cut to the size I need for my composition book. And I folded it in half and placed a mark where we want that embroidery to go. So now we need to hoop this and we are going to use the OESD Stable Stick Stabilizer. This is a tearaway stabilizer that has a paper backing and when you tear away the paper backing, it is adhesive. So I've got a piece here that I've already cut and I'm gonna hoop it up. When you hoop this, you hoop it with the paper side up. So that's kind of the slicker side. And we're going to put that into the hoop. Tighten up that hoop. Okay. And then once we've got it nice and tight, what we're gonna do is score an area so that we can expose the adhesive. So you can just use your scissor tips or a pin. Just be careful not to go all the way through. And you wanna score that. Score mine a little deeper. And peel away that paper backing. So you can peel the whole part, the entire inside of the hoop, which is what I like to do. Or if you know specifically where you want the embroidery to go, you can just peel the paper under that area. So now the adhesive is exposed and we're going to put our fabric to be embroidered onto the hoop. Now when you do this, um, normally you would want to use a template, make sure you had it nice and straight in the hoop, but on the B770QE+, Plus, there's a feature called pinpoint placement, and that's going to allow us to actually get it straight without even hooping it straight. So I'm actually just gonna put this on here. I'm even gonna put it a little bit crooked just so we can demonstrate how easy it is to get it straight in the hoop. Okay, so you're just gonna press that down until it is nice and stuck. And now we're ready to embroider. So we're gonna go over to the embroidery machine and we are going to add some lettering. So I'm gonna put initials, a monogram on this. And what I wanna do is I wanna start with uh, the font that I want to use. So I'm going to choose my font 
and I'm going to enter my initials in the order I want them to go. So my first initial, my last initial, and then my middle initial, and say OK. And now I'm going to choose the hoop I want to work with, which is the oval hoop, and I can see my lettering right in there. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually put the hoop on the machine. So now I want to play around with these letters a little bit because for a monogram, I like for the last initial to be a little bit bigger in the middle. So with the 770QE+, Plus, there's actually a function that allows you to ungroup. So now I choose the ungroup and my letters are separated, C, B, and K. And what that allows me to do is now we can enlarge that middle letter. So I'm going to make that middle letter quite a bit bigger, about 150% of the other two letters. Okay, and I'm happy with that. And now we want to move it, we'll select this K and move it a little bit to the side. And we'll select this C and move it a little bit to the side. And then one way you can see if you've got these lined up is to select each one individually and go to its position. So I've got this one selected. We're going to go to the position. And I'm going to change it so that the X position is 0 and the Y position is 0. So it's exactly in the center of the hoop. And now I'm going to choose the K and I'm going to make its Y position 0 and choose the C and make its Y position zero. So they're all centered across the hoop. And then I'm just gonna move the C a little bit closer. All right, now I'm happy with the placement of those letters to each other. So now I wanna be able to use the letters as a group again, so I'm going to regroup them. So we go back to this group function and choose the plus and just do that twice, and now our initials are lined back up and they are uh, a monogram as a unit again. So now that we have the design the way we want it, we're going to place it, and we're going to use a function in the B770QE Plus called Pinpoint Placement. And with Pinpoint Placement, we're actually going to select a grid that has several points on the design we can choose. First, I'm going to choose the center Dot. And what I'm going to do is this center is the center of my design and I want to align the center of my design to that point that I've marked on my fabric. So I'm going to use the multifunction knobs. And then what you want to do is get this so that that needle is exactly at that center point. So you just kind of keep moving it until you've got it exactly where you want it to go. And then you touch set. Now what you're going to do is to select the other point you want to position. Now what I've chosen is I want to align along this horizontal line that I've marked here, and I want to, uh, so I'm going to choose the horizontal point uh, at the center here. So I've chosen that point, and now I'm going to again use my multifunction knobs to turn, and it's actually going to rotate my design slightly, to make it fit the angle that I put it in the hoop. So even though I didn't hoop it perfectly straight, I'm able to align it by using this pinpoint placement tool. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to touch set, and it's now ready to embroider. So once I'm ready to embroider, we simply select the embroidery function, and I am embroidering on the new Smart Drive technology module. So this module actually embroiders very fast. This entire design is actually only going to take three minutes to stitch out. So we've got this design ready to go, and I'm just going to push the go button and let it start sewing. Now my embroidery is all done, so I can remove it from the hoop. And then we will take it over and take the stabilizer out of the hoop. 
and now we just want to remove that stabilizer from the back. One thing about using an adhesive stabilizer is that you wanna be sure that when you tear it away, especially with a satin stitch, that you don't tear um, your stitches. So I like to be sure that I support my stitches with my hands as I go through and tear away that embroidery, that stabilizer. And now we've removed all the stabilizer. You can see there's still a little bit in there. Um, if you really want to, you can pick it out, but this is gonna be inside your notebook, so you don't need to worry about it being perfect on the back side. All right, so now this is embroidered and we're ready to take it to the next step to finish the project. Okay, so now we've done the embroidery, we're ready for the last step of the project, and this part is really fun. We're going to put a decorative finish around the whole edge of the project, but also construct it at the same time. So what I've done, I've got my pre-embroidered fabric uh, and pre-quilted all ready to go. And then I've got two pieces of fabric that I'm going to fold in half. And those are going to be the flaps. So the size of this is going to depend on your composition book and how tall it needs to be. Um, but you also want to make sure you give yourself at least five inches or so here so that there's plenty of room for that book to tuck inside the flap. So now we're gonna do that on both sides. And then we're going to use some clips to clip this in place. You wanna clip this on the right side because we're going to definitely be sewing this from the right side of the project. So we'll clip this all the way around. And we're using the serger to finish this. And so I like to use clips as opposed to pins when I'm using the serger, just because there's that extra reassurance that I'm not going to accidentally sew over a pin. Okay, we've now got the whole thing clipped and ready to sew. And we are going to use a four thread overlock, but we're gonna use a decorative thread to give us that decorative finish around the outside edge. Now, because we're using a decorative thread and we're working with quilted fabric, I wanted to test this before I stitched it. So I'm gonna show you my test stitching over here. And in both of my test stitchings here, you can see it looks great on the top side. I'm using the Wonderfill Razzle thread in the upper looper and it gives me a really beautiful decorative finish. One thing I did discover as I was doing my test stitching, this is my first sample, and you can see that the needle thread was a little bit loose here. And so I have uh, the ability on my Bernina overlocker that I can adjust that needle tension. If you've got an overlocker where you don't have the ability to individually adjust the tensions, this would be okay. Um, but you can see over here that with the ability to adjust those tensions, we can get a really perfect stitch and it looks absolutely perfect. Um, so I'm going to show you how I set up that stitch and then also because we're using the Bernina L860, how I can save that stitch to use it again. So let's go over to the overlocker and we're gonna start by selecting the four thread overlocker, the four thread overlock stitch and I've got it selected here. So now I want to thread the machine. Now this machine does have a guided mode. So if you would like to have assistance walking you through uh, threading the machine step by step, you can use the guided mode and it will actually give you animations and everything you need step by step to do that. Uh, but I've already got my uh, stitch set up and I'm just gonna go ahead and thread it so that you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to open up both doors and I'm gonna start with the upper looper. Now you actually can thread in any order, uh, but I just wanna happen to start with the upper looper because that's my decorative thread here. And what I'm going to do is get that into my tension. There's a little back tension here that it needs to go in. And then we're going to use the air threader. So with the air threader, you just wanna make sure you have plenty of length so it can travel through the threader. You turn the air threading nozzles, which closes the pipes so that the thread can pass through. And then what I love about the Bernina One Step Air Threader is you use the foot control to activate it. And then you simply pass the thread over the air threader nozzle and it comes out the other side. So now we'll go ahead and thread the lower looper. Same way. I'm using Isocord thread for my stitching here because I wanted a nice shiny decorative stitch. 
but you could use any serger thread that you wanted to use. And now I'm going to thread my needles. So here, threading the needles, they're actually on the L860 is a built-in needle threader and it works with both needles. And so I'm gonna first do it with the green or the right needle. And when I do that, I'm going to switch the knob and there's a little window that's green that tells me I'm using the correct needle threader. So I'm going to thread that and then we can thread the left needle. And again, we'll use the needle threader, but this time we're gonna to switch to yellow. Okay. And now we've got all our threads, get them all under the foot there, and we are ready to stitch. So now that we're ready to stitch, I'm going to open the air threader pipes again and close everything up and put on the, make sure I've got that good, put on the uh, bin. So now again, we're using the four thread, but as I mentioned, I'm gonna make some adjustments to this stitch to make it exactly the way I want. And what adjustments I made is I increased the lower loop retention and I can use this uh, uh, button on the front of the machine or I can actually do it on screen but I increased the lower loop retention. I also increased the left needle tension, and that's what I found worked perfect for this particular combination. And then because I really wanted to show off the thread, I made the stitch length a little bit shorter. Okay. Now, what's awesome about this machine is I've set up those settings. Now, if I wanna come back and do this again or come back to this stitch later, normally I'd have to write down all those settings and remember them but with this machine, I can actually save them. So I've got everything set the way I want it. So now if we want to go to our save stitches, we touch the little heart and we can see the stitch that we've already saved the notebook. So we select it and we're ready to stitch. So you'll want to do a test sew. I've already test stitched this to make sure it's exactly how I want it to go. And I'm going to sew this in four distinct lines. So I'm gonna sew one short edge, I'm going to show the other short edge and then I'm going to sew the two long edges. So we're just going to get that under the foot. I'm using the freehand system, which I love to be able to lift the foot and get things right where I want them to go. And then we are just going to start sewing. And as I'm chaining off here, I'm using the thread cutter and that's gonna give me a nice long tail, which I'm going to use later. So now when we're done, we've got these tails hanging off our corners that we need to take care of. We don't wanna just cut these off because this could come unraveled. So what we're gonna do is flip over to the back side, and we're going to use a big yarn needle, the great big eye, and tuck that into the overlocker stitches on one side. I'm gonna tuck the eye side out first so that the eye's coming out here. And then you want to thread the eye with your tail. And then you're just gonna pull that through. And then you can clip here at the edge. So when you're done, now you're going to have a neat little corner and your tails are secured. So now you just insert the front and back covers into your composition book cover, and you've got a completed project. You've used the long arm, the embroidery machine, and the serger all in one quick and easy project.
Hi, I'm Deanna Springer. Thank you for joining us for the Great Wisconsin Quilt Show. And thank you for tuning in for Quilted, Embroidered, and Serge Notebook Cover with Christy Burcham. We're so pleased to have Christy with us today for live Q&A. Hi, Christy, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Wonderful, we're, doing, we're having a great time at the Quilt Show this week. And we have questions rolling in about your demonstration, your lecture. It's been really enjoyable uh, watching you combine all the different machines to make one project. So I'll share questions with you that we're receiving. Uh, Sue A is asking, which, what pen are you using when you were marking your first lines before you did your ruler work? Uh, I like to use the Choco liner. Now, when it comes to pens, everybody has their favorite, the one they like to use. Um, but uh, I frequently will use the, um, the friction pens, um, which can remove away with heat, but you have to be careful sometimes with those, especially if you live in a really cold climate because the ink can come back um, or you can use a chalk liner uh, as well. So either of those work really great. Great, thanks for sharing your, your tips on that. The next uh, question is from Evelyn in the chat and Evelyn is asking, is BSR specific to your machine and can you please define the acronym for her? Sure, absolutely. So BSR stands for Bernina Stitch Regulator and the BSR itself is specific to Bernina. There are some other machines out there that have stitch regulation but every machine does it a little bit differently. So the Bernina stitch regulator is an optical sensor and it's actually reading the fabric and seeing that fabric move. Um, if you're doing it on a domestic machine, it's reading it from the top. And if you're doing it on one of the longer machines, it's reading it from underneath. And so it's seeing that fabric move and based on how fast or slow you move the fabric, it's going to move the needle appropriately so that your stitch length always stays the same. It's a great help uh, with, to regulate your stitches. You don't, you're not having to do it yourself. You have uh, guided exactly. help, expert help from the machine. It's a great feature. And Lois is asking, did you put batting, quilt batting between your fabrics? I did, I did. I used a low loft uh, cotton batting. Um, and um, with this project, you would definitely wanna use a low loft because you are gonna be surging those edges when you're done. Great, thank you. And Lois is asking, how do you keep the needle from gumming up when you're stitching through the adhesive stabilizer? Well, the adhesive stabilizer, different stabilizers have different amounts of stickiness to them. So I found with the OESD stable stick, it really doesn't gum up the needle. However, if you're working with one that is kind of sticky and it's gumming up your needle, there's a couple things you can do. One is if you use a titanium or chrome coated needle, it doesn't um, stick to that needle as much. The other thing that you can do is you can just wipe that needle off after, um, after each color change. And I like to use the little alcohol prep pads that you have for like when you have a cut, you can clean them off. You just swipe down that needle and um, it'll clean that, that sticky right off. Great, thank you. And Lois is asking, could you tell us again which stabilizer you're using? Yes, it is the OESD Stable Stick Tearaway. Um, so it's an um, adhesive stabilizer with a paper backing, and um, you can uh, peel away that paper backing to expose the adhesive. Great. And Beth is sharing a comment, not so much a question, but she says, she's true confession. She says she accidentally put the sticky back stabilizer in the hoop upside down and scored it and removed the stabilizer and it didn't work so well. And she said she'll only do that once and it'll remind her <laughs> for future stitching that she won't do that again. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And one way you can do this, some people choose, is if you want to, you can peel that paper off before you hoop it. The only disadvantage to that is that it does sometimes leave a little bit of residue on the inside ring of your hoop and then you'd have to clean that off. Great tip, and Joe is asking, uh, is there a link to your pattern or dimensions? Uh, and she loves her Berninas. Awesome, I love my Berninas too. Um, no, there's no link to this particular pattern, but the dimensions are gonna depend on the size of your notebook cover. So just the simple way to do it is you're gonna measure the top to bottom of the notebook cover and you're gonna add a half inch and then you're gonna measure wrap around your notebook cover and it's going to, you're gonna add an inch. 
So if it's 15 inches, add an inch to make it 16 and add a half inch to the top dimension. That way you can do it with any notebook cover just by uh, measuring your cover. Uh, great to know. And we can also rewatch your video too. It'll be available for many months to come. So we can rewatch and uh, make some notes even if we want to. And Verena is asking on Facebook, oh, it's more of a question or a comment actually. Such a good teacher, detailed explanations each step. She's giving you an A plus. So I'm thinking she maybe had teacher herself. <laughs> well, thanks. I very much appreciate that. And um, Judy is saying the same thing. She really likes your detailed instructions and your demo style. And Leslie Kelly is saying, wow, I love this. I have to make some of these for gifts for an event uh, that's coming up and these will be perfect. And you really could customize these for different friends and family members for the upcoming holidays. Absolutely, you totally could. You could make them with different monograms for the different people or also you could do an embroidery design instead of a monogram and choose uh, something that um, if you want to make a whole bunch of them in a row, you could choose something that would work for anybody. Great tips and you could uh, change up your fabrics and switch your thread colors uh, and really make uh, custom gifts uh, and each one will be special on their own. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, Leslie is asking again about stabilizers, OESC or OEST? It's OESD like dog. So it stands for Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design. So those stabilizers are available uh, online and we can uh, head over to the Quilt Show Vendor Mall and click on Bernina and learn more about uh, those stabilizers too and about the machines. Yeah. Uh, Beth is asking, could you please ex explain once again how to get the right measurements for the cover? Okay, sure thing. So you're going to take the top to bottom of the cover, if you've got it laying in front of you, top to bottom, measure that at a half inch. Then you're going to take your notebook cover and from the right side uh, cover, wrap, take a, a cloth tape measure wrap around it to see how it is. Because every one is a little bit different in thickness, so you need to get, get the measurement around the outside edge and then add one inch to that. So it's really customizing it to our each individual notebook. So maybe do yes, a little yes. test, cut it a little bigger than you think and do a test run before you do your stitching so you know exactly absolutely. what size you need to, to make for, for your notebook. Absolutely, absolutely. And one thing I have found with these, I've, I've made composition notebook covers for a long time. We've all kind of done different variations on it. It used to be that a composition book was like the same size. If you bought one at one store, it was the same size as another store. And I found that it's not so consistent anymore as it used to be. So you definitely want to measure the book that you're making it for. Great tips. And it could be for a book too, a book cover uh, or a notebook yeah, cover. Absolutely. Uh, it works uh, both ways. And the quilt behind you, I am admiring and it's a Dresden quilt in like fall color wedges. And you know, if we didn't have an embroidery unit with our machine, we could do some quilting and uh, make a notebook cover that way. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great way you could use um, some little orphan blocks that way too, and just piece them together to get that top. Great tips, and I, I really enjoy seeing how you're taking all three machines, you know, our sewing machine, our serger, um, and our long arm machine. You were making uh, small projects with your long arm machine. Everyone knows we can make uh, quilts, bud size quilts with a long arm machine, but it's fun to see you do smaller projects and it really demonstrates uh, how the machine works and looping all those machines in together is really inspiring. Yeah, I mean, it really is, with this project, it really goes to show that when every machine is doing what it's best at, it actually really does save you time. For example, you can do ruler work on a domestic machine, and if that's all you have available to you, you could totally do this project with a domestic machine. But if you've got a long arm, it's set up, it's ready to go, you've got that extra room, um, so you're not kind of cramped in while you're doing that ruler work, it really sets everything up perfectly. And then of course our embroidery right on our home machine uh, is perfect to get that customization. And then I really, my favorite part of this project is the surged edge. I just think it's so cute. I love using that razzle thread. It's so pretty and it's so fast. It just goes together so fast when you finish it on the serger. 
and it finished the finishes the edges beautifully. When you first showed this project, I thought perhaps it was bias binding, but it is serger thread. And that's our next question uh, from Judy. When you serge the edges, did you cut some fabric away? And if so, how much? So I didn't cut very much fabric away, just a hair, um, because I had already cut my top to be exactly the size I wanted it for my cover. Um, if you wanted that, if you're a little not comfortable with sewing right on the edge, you could always cut it just a little bit bigger and then measure the amount that you're cutting off. Um, but no, I didn't. I just actually let it skim. Uh, I did use the knife, but I just let the edge of the fabric skim off so that just a hair is coming off when you're serging it. Great, thank you. And our next question is from Becky on Facebook, and she's asking, uh, how wide did you make the pockets on the inside? So I made them five inches deep, which is great for, you know, a pretty average composition book cover. But remember, it's a folded piece. So you're going to fold over uh, a fabric that's twice that width that you want. So mine was 10 by 10 and a half for my notebook cover. Uh, but again, it would depend on the measurement of your book. And then it's folded so that inside edge is uh, finished off just by the fold. Yeah. And Christy, exactly. we have uh, curious uh, comments. How did you get started in sewing? Well, I, um, my mom was a sewer. She uh, was a tailor. And so I was always around sewing when I was a kid. And actually, my very first job was at a Bernina store in Oklahoma City. And I started as a cashier. And I didn't sew much when I started at the store, but I couldn't be around all that great stuff and all those wonderful teachers for very long without starting sewing. So that's actually how I started um, learning to sew, but also how I started my career in sewing as well. Well, you're such an inspiration for us. If you started from a beginning and you're this accomplished, you're really giving us the encouragement to keep stitching and keep practicing our techniques. And we're so grateful for your time today and sharing your talents. And thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a delight. And I appreciate everyone tuning in today for Christie's lecture and be sure to head over to quiltshow.com and click on the vendor mall and find Christie through the Bernina uh, booth, the virtual booth, and see all the exciting things that Bernina is doing uh, with stitching and quilting. And be sure to take in the quilt exhibits too. Enjoy. Thanks. Thanks again for joining us. This year's educational presentations are made possible with your contributions. Your support helps us offer a free and accessible online experience where we can celebrate our shared love of quilting. Please help PBS Wisconsin bring back the event next year stronger than ever by making a gift today. You can donate on our website or text QUILT to 1-800-236-3636 to make a gift from your phone. Your generosity makes a difference. Thank you.